Welcome back to year number 12, week number one for Cascade Valley, the Coyotes. Now, first things first, I just want to get it out the way. Tyrell Brown is your Heisman favorite. It's an 83 overall. They should have put some respect in this young man's name. Brown is an absolute stud, but we're still recruiting halfbacks. So you never know what can happen. But we got to deal with a lot of big players this year. Alex Caver, who we wish came to Cascade Valley, but didn't years ago. Is that a junior Alabama? Applefield's killing it for LSU. Dodson is apparently killing it for Navy. First time we're actually hearing of him, but apparently he's a very good running back. But the running back I'd be worried about is Steven Crosby. 91 overall, the junior, combined with Caver, combined with the other wide receiver they have. That is a crazy trio at Alabama, and they're a top 10 team this season for a reason. As for the top 25 this season, you're seeing we're sitting at number one, the preseason favorites, buddy. You'd love to see it. Miami at two. You see Michigan at three. Penn State and UCF rounding out your top five. Remember, UCF is who we played the national title last season. We ended up beating them, playing them here pretty soon in the regular season. But Ohio State, LSU, Clemson. A lot of the teams you kind of expect. Navy, though, from 11 to 12, they're in the top 15, which is a little wild, but sometimes you see them get ranked high in the preseason. Nebraska, SMU, Georgia Tech, South Alabama is now a top 25 team. They're building a great program there. But speaking of building a great program, we're doing a lot here in Cascade Valley. We have so many prospects visiting this week. Matt Webb, Tyler Scrobach, Damon Owens, Marcus Griffin, Dale Pastor, Keen Williams, Edgar Cooper, Javon Ford, Lores Tisdale, Trevor Bailey Smith. He has two last names because he's that good. Now, a lot of these players you probably don't really have much of a sense for, but we've got some really good guys in here that I'm excited about. A very good tight end. I know you're saying we already have two good tight ends in McBride and Marquette Renee, but you never have too many good tight ends, especially when we don't have a mobile quarterback. So we'll deal with that. We're trying to build in the offensive line. We're building a lot of depth. You can kind of see there. Defensive line, we're attacking a couple of outside linebackers. You know that Coach Mervin McMervin loves some athletes. So we're looking at athletes across the board as well. But Trevor Bailey Smith's one of our top priorities here. He's a nasty, strong safety. We kind of look at his scouting. Good speed, good acceleration. He doesn't have to have great speed, in my opinion, to play safety for us. We've got great talent across the board. But 94 hit power, 91 tackle, 80 man and zone coverage, 82 press, and 84 block shed. This dude could be a game changer. We've also got Brock Turner as an option in case for some reason we cannot get Trevor Bailey Smith. Cortez Terry is a really good athlete. Uh, Hansford Jr. is a really good athlete as well. If we take a look at some of his stuff, 95 speed, 87 acceleration, 82 route running. He's got 91 elusiveness, 82 juke move. There's a lot of really good stats for him. Uh, Marshall LaChapelle. This dude, again, is not going to be anything super crazy with speed. 65 overall there. If you kind of look across the board, he's got 80 play rec. He's got good hit power. This guy can maybe he's an outside linebacker, maybe defensive end with 90 power moves. We're probably putting him on the line, in my opinion. But again, anybody we can get in this team, that's great. We're willing to bring him here. Jarvis King's a really talented middle linebacker um, that is technically losing one, but he's an 85 overall. Great coverage for him as well. Javon Ford's the guy that we really just discovered. Uh, he's a five-star, number two corner overall. He can maybe be a big-time player in the team. We're going to be fighting to kind of get you know him in that spot, but an early visit should put us in a really good area. Uh, Tyrese Lavore, I know you're saying, the game, bro. You have a quarterback. I know. But you don't know how these guys are going to do. Every quarterback we have on the roster, we have no idea if they're talented, if they're going to work out, if they're not going to work out, if they're injury-prone like Fullwood. We need to have somebody out there so we'll see how the season goes if this guy ends up wanting to come here there's a decision to be made but if he doesn't we'll see what our quarterbacks do and then lastly i just want to talk about jacob coleman we signed him in the very first week we're technically in week number two we didn't play week one so week two of the actual dynasty but this dude's gonna be coming to cascade valley 93 speed 87 acceleration 85 play rec 80 man coverage 83 zone 86 press 78 catching he's got pretty good route running as well 76 route running 83 catching traffic 81 spectacular catch 85 juke move this guy could be a domino that plays both sides he could be kind of like jay bone replaced corner and he plays wide receiver you never know but i want to get a big time player making big time plays in my team so we will be taking in jacob coleman the three star who ends up end up being an 80 overall to cascade valley next year now again taking a look at a roster michael lanier is our top guy 97 overall garrett neely 94 along with jaron poe who's a redshirt freshman yeah 94 overall redshirt freshman rodriguez gibson a lot of these guys are coming back Let's talk about wearing the prestigious number eight. There's one guy and one guy only that made sense as a senior athlete for Cascade Valley. And that guy is going to be Christoph Houston. He did not have the offseason we essentially wanted him to have, but maybe he just hit his full potential. He was kind of a guy that most people thought was an overachiever from the start, but he's worked his way to be an 88 overall. He came back for his final season looking to get back to back national titles. So let right to Christoph Houston, Don's number eight this year. The last thing we'll look at before we jump into today's game is the roster of Oklahoma State. Our former coordinator decided to bolt Cascade Valley. We won a national title. He said, oh, oh, buddy, let me get it back. I don't blame him. We will absolutely run the score today. Oklahoma State is our former coordinator, now a head coach. They've got not so great quarterback. They've got 
an okay running back situation. They ended up getting a transfer here with Marcus Mbou. 95 speed is great, but he doesn't really have a lot of the intangibles. A wide receiver, we're going to be seeing that they've got an 81 overall as their top guy. Not a ton of speed here as well. We should blow this team out of the water. And if we don't, everybody's running laps. And remember, we have an insane amount of prospects visiting this game today, but a big key for us is rushing for over 100, passing for over 250, four swatted of passes, two picks. We got a whole lot we got to do. Just try to ball out today. That's our goal. The opening game for year number 12 for Cascade Valley. Look, this is going to be different. Our offense is vastly different. We got a pocket pass. We don't really have the burner that we used to have out there. So it's a whole lot of work to see what this team can do. And the first pass goes to our Heisman winning running back. He's going to take this one, hands it off to Brown. Brown looking for some blockers. Got some. Gets to the outside. Tyrell Brown already looking a little nasty out here. Looking like he's in midseason form. Got some time here, throws it. He's got McBride behind him. The accuracy a little bit off there, but it's a dot. Reading company, ready to get things going. Nice little handoff, Tyrell Brown. Goes for a spin move, gets hit backwards, and he goes down to the five. There have been so many questions coming into this game of what will Taylor Reed ultimately look like? A true freshman starting at Cascade Valley. You haven't seen this in a long time, but you have seen the touchdown vulture getting a touchdown to start the year. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a fumble on the opening kickoff, and Cascade Valley has recovered it. Not a good time right now if you're OK State, but you know what? They're coach to the state here, and they would have never been scheduled against us. We have not seen our defense yet, but we have seen what the offense to do. Taylor Reed getting his first touchdown of his career in that last play. The squad already looking dominant to start. They bring a guy in the backfield here, a little QB keeper. You know, that's our, our Achilles heel. They throw to the outside, and Smith goes out of bounds instead of getting the first. Things getting a little spicy here, OK State. It's a guy in motion to go with the run. The middleman zero is there, but 49 gets the first down. Boom, playing the running back here out of the slot. Christoph Houston patrol in the middle. It's like a QB keeper. He's going to end up running. Christoph Houston trying to make him pay. He can. Boma's is going to try to bring him down, but ultimately they cannot. One of the biggest issues Cascade Valley's had over the years is just shutting down mobile quarterbacks. Every single season, they give us some sort of fits, and we struggle a little bit. They throw one here. Christoph Houston over jumps that one. Wilkins is able to bring him down, though. Dino Gambling right here across the middle. Another run again. They know the playbook. Their coach used to be here. He knows we struggle to stop the run, but we got some new people there. Little QB, little pitch out here. Darren Poe and company are able to bring him down. But again, the momentum is moving for OK State. Keyshawn Anderson trying to get in the backfield here. Put a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, but he throws a strike across the middle for a 10 yard grab by Powell. Jake Fisher feeling pretty good right now. He's got his team in a good spot. He goes again. They are running the triple option like an old school Georgia Tech squad. Our squad needs to stop here. They go with a nice little zig route here, and Hawks is going to be in the end zone, or Fox is in the end zone. Cascade Valley has that lead cut in half. They found themselves here in a big third down and six yards. Can they get it? We're playing the pass. Watching their guys. They throw one, and Donnell Gamblin is lurking. Ladies and gentlemen, he is lurking in 5-9. Gets a huge turnover. Read again under center. Sees his guy, throws one a little behind. It's a two-yard grab, but you got to imagine both guys fell. Reed under center. A little bit of a design rollout. Throws one. It's an absolute dot to Jeremiah Butler, who picks up a 20-yard game. Roderick Johnson in the QB. Got to imagine it's a little bit of a gadget play. And Roderick Johnson showing he's got some legs here. Roderick Johnson turning up and in the end zone. He might be looking better than our Heisman guy. Start the second quarter here. Squad has been doing very well in offense. Taylor Reed trying to show the legs and he loses a yard. Not a great run, obviously, by Taylor Reed, but hopefully Tyrell Brown's got a better one cooking up here. And he's doing well. Look at Tyrell Brown. He said, you know what, Roderick Johnson getting a little too comfortable scoring touchdowns. Percent again, Taylor Reed hit him with the play action. It's our bread and butter and just, I got some questions. Reed again, some questionable throws so far in this game, but we're hoping it gets a little bit better. Sets his feet, plants this one, and Chris Mack gets drilled on that one. Pause if needed. Offense is definitely sold after those beautiful first couple of drives. It's been... A little bit more difficult, but Jay Bohm getting a reception, and you love to see it. 23 yards. I think what's really interesting for us is that Jay Bohm is wearing number three, obviously the same number as Patrick McDonald. McDonald was a two-way player that really just played one way, but played two different positions, and now we've got a guy that's stepping into his shoes that's even more hyped than he was. So let's make sure we put some respect on Patrick McDonald's name because he is a two-time national champion, and if it weren't for him, there is no shot we would have won that some of those national titles that we did. Squad feeling good. We got a guy here, and it's Chris Mack, and they say he's down at the one. Tyrell Brown finally getting a goal line carry. He's seen Roderick Johnson obviously take in and take two of his touchdowns, one on a long run, one on a short run, but Brown, the Heisman favorite, is back in the end zone. We're lined up here for a 50-yard field goal. Materko getting an opportunity, and... <clears throat> okay. 
maybe one of our last field goal attempts of the season. Derek Johnson's in the halfbacks trying to catch him off guard this time with a halfback screen, but they are not having it. OK State knows we love to run them, and our second time running, it goes nowhere. We saw what our kicker did. We decided we're going to go forward pretty much across the board. And oh, that was such a nice pass. It gets tipped. And you know what? We've got a pretty solid lead, so we're OK. Back on defense, 50 seconds for them to try to score. Doing our best to lock down, but what a dot here to Powell to get a 15-yard reception. Nice little pass there for them. We're playing for the QB contained because you never know if they're going to run a little bit of something with the QB. A nice little leak out here for Hill, and Hill's going to get down about the 50-yard line. Big opportunity here. Can we get a stop? Across the middle, they get a nice pick play, and they're down about nine yards in. The quarterback throws one in a wide open guy. They knocked the referee down. The referee falls down, and so does our defense. Eric Davis, 34 yards later. He's getting spicy. Got to watch the quarterback. They throw one. Lanier doesn't get up, and Darian Powell goes up top, and they just cut the lead to 14. Things getting pretty crazy here. Gasky Valley's defense letting us down a little bit. We're trying to do our best, but it is just not good enough because OK State has got momentum. Another good run here for Kylan. He's been racking up yards. He gets 12 more here. Houston's got his work cut out for him. They go with the QB draw. We didn't expect it, and Lanier comes across the side to stop Fisher after five. And Smith in motion. They cut up the middle. We think we kind of have that stop, but he falls forward. So many yards. First and goal. Can we get a stop? Houston steps up, and they say Callen ran him over and got in. This is a game all of a sudden. Second and two. Trying to figure things out a little bit here. That was not what we expected. Reed is going to get absolutely sandwiched. This is going to go all the way back to the house, and they are going to go for two to try to tie this up. Things are scary. Can Cascade Valley's defense get a stop? They've been giving up way too many points right now, and it is showing. And even Christoph Hughes is not able to stop these guys. They're running right through our tackles. I don't quite know what the halftime speech was from the coach. Again, former Cascade Valley coach, but we need our team to do something better. We got great coverage, in my opinion, here. He throws one way out of bounds, and we're in a good spot now. We're watching, we're watching, and all of a sudden, Smith is wide open. What a hit by Mikel Lanier, but are you kidding me, defense? Their quarterback's trying to boot Scooter Boogie all the way to the end. We got one guy maybe to stop him, too. But then now it's first and goal. Another first and goal. Lanier is going to get a huge stop, though, making him lose one yard. Second and goal. They go with a halfback run, and it is the wide open part the Red Sea. This defense is getting destroyed. And because of the nature of how the score is right now, they are absolutely going for it. Going for two. And I don't know what happened, but we will take the fact that they didn't get it. It's a four-point game. Two freshmen in the quarterback, the team with a little bit of adversity. The offensive line is really on the hook right now. They are the ones that are killing us. I will admit, we're definitely a little pass happy right now, and that's probably not the recipe we should be cooking. And we had B, we just don't get any blocking. The defense is killing our offensive line. They are heavy right now. Taylor Reed, though, has a guy. Butler is going to beat the press. Can he get down the field? He can't, but we will take, finally, a big completion for this offense. I'm not even mad at how the offense has played. Their defense has played outstanding, and our defense has played, like, not defending national champions. It has been abysmal to watch Cascade Valley leave guys open over and over and over. A lot of those guys we had last season at save us aren't here. Approach in the red zone. Things are looking much better for the squad. Tyrell Brown doing what he does best, making moves in the open field for a first down. Back at it again. Brown looking to make some moves. We'll take it five, six yards each time. We're here for it. There's an unbelievable amount of time left in this game, so we need to make sure that we have some unbelievable plays to get us in the end zone. Two more yards here for Brown. Two for six on third down is just not going to get the job done. Where Derek Johnson comes in on the screen. Last time we saw him on the screen, it didn't work out super well. This time, he's got wide open spaces. Bro, Derek Johnson with a huge block from 73 is in the end zone. He scored not once, not twice, but three times today, and he's saving us right now. We genuinely may be in one of those games where we have to just get the final touchdown to win this game. Gibson with this foot broke his ankle nearly, but Rodriguez Gibson, who failed us earlier, said, let me rise up and get the interception. Rodriguez Gibson, the savvy veteran, making the squad look great. And look at Tyrell. Mr. Brown with 15 big yards. As much as I want to chew the clock here, I honestly am a little afraid of doing so. And Taylor Reed nearly gets away from that. It would have been a huge gain if he could have. Second to 14 after that big loss. Wide open is Charles Mack. Chris Mack, excuse me. I forgot his first name. I was so excited. Taylor Reed has been staring down adversity today. With an offensive line playing this bad, he has somehow, someway been extraordinary. Nice pass here to Boehm. Boehm breaking some ankles. Jay Boehm, are you kidding me? The Iron Man, the two-way player fighting for his bread. We haven't seen much of Jay Boehm on defense. 
but good lord is this man putting a stamp on the offense so many yards today probably close to 150 total yards this afternoon he has been legendary in his first game starting to drive again we have a three-point lead we're trying to go ahead and increase that a bit and tyro brown nearly has the first joey horning for oklahoma state has played lights out nine tackles in the afternoon but we need him to not get a tackle here unless it's a first down for us and Roderick Derek Johnson fighting for his bread is down to about the three. Now we can start chewing the clock. Bring the clock down close to two minutes as we possibly can here. The handoff goes to Tyro Brown back in the end zone again. And Tyro Brown gives us the go ahead double digit score. We just got to lock in on defense. A win is a win. I don't care if it's by 10, 100, or 1. As long as we get the WS, what matters. Tyro Brown, 150 yards, two receiving or two touchdowns, two receptions, and 22 yards. He was electric today, but there's another guy we should be giving some props to. Actually, two more guys to get some props today, too. Woo! Recapping the stats, Taylor Reed, 21 to 34, 355 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. A lot of pressure. The offensive line did not block well for him today, but a true freshman looking like a seasoned veteran. I'm okay with how he played. He was exceptional today. On the ground again, you saw what Brown did, 150, two touchdowns. Shout out to Derek Johnson. Two touchdowns on his own, three and 41. He had a nasty scramble as well. He went to the house, and Jay Bohm even got a little bit involved in the running game. But can we put some respect on Jay Bohm? A debut of six receptions, 134 yards receiving. Leading all our receivers, we have a very talented receiver core. Jeremiah Butler at four for 70, Chris Mack at three for 37. The only other guys to score were Derek Johnson, who got one, and Mikel Smith, who got one as well. But the best receiver today by far was Jay Bone. Defensively, Mikel Lanier was great. Eight tackles for him, six for Christoph Houston. From a sack perspective, we only had one today, which is unacceptable with the defensive line we have. We have so many guys that are so highly rated. Jaron Poe didn't do anything. One tackle, you're 94 overall. Buddy, you better be doing something. From an interception perspective, though, Rodriguez Gibson was the man. Two interceptions for him, both in the fourth quarter, both leading the team in what he needed to do. Big fan of how he played today. Dino Gambler was massive today as well. One interception that was huge for us as well. I will take how the defense played. Mangiro had two deflections. One of those went off his helmet. We have to play better. The defense gave up too many points to a team that is not ranked, that is not supposed to be good, that may not even be bowl eligible this year. Yes, they had our former coach, and yes, that probably helped out a little bit. But Cascade Valley, they want to repeat as national champions for the first time in a while. This cannot be how we play. Be safe, be smart, tell somebody love them. Catch you guys on the next one.